Okay folks, well this video is of my first day on a five day adventure in Exmoor. Here's a Torton on the way, and here's Minehead on the way, and here is the famous steam train in Minehead. There's a Minehead start of southwest coast path there. And here we are now on the start of the first day in Exmoor at Portlock. I miss you mostly all the time. I think I made a big mistake to let you go Cause I'm, I'm getting lonely by the day And days are passing faster Ever since you've gone away I miss you mostly all the time Many things have changed around since you have changed your mind Wondering who you're with today And if you're thinking about me ever since you've gone away Son, I've got a tough and up I whisper to the mirror Remember how we uh, felt just the last of five books with a five in Radio February. Uh, and it actually to takes tell. coins by the looks of it. Yeah, it does. I've just got a phone box in England that takes coins in Somerset. Okay, folks. Well, that's where I am. I'm just leaving um, the sleepy town of uh, Porlock in uh, I miss you Somerset. The time. Maybe not. I'm sure I'm in Somerset. I think I made a big mistake to let Pretty you sure go. Pretty sure Somerset, because I'm going up to one. Uh, I'm getting lonely by the together. day. It's a bit steep going up here on the road. Passing faster. Okay. Since you've gone away. Okay. Off was a hard work with the big bag anyway. But not hard, well, hard work, but easy. See, they can see a bit of it. So uh, today I've decided not to uh, go up the highest point, which is Dunkery Beacon, which is just over there, at 500 and some metres high. This is about 300 metres, just over 300 metres high. This hill. This is going to be quite windy in the morning. Well folks, I found um, a decent place to camp out of the wind with a good view, um, so I think I'll be fine here for the night. folks how to keep warm in the winter um, I thought I'd do a segment on that uh, so um, I'm cam camping up in Exmoor at the moment okay it's only just gone autumn so it's not exactly winter and I'm not exactly in the Calgums but this is what you need you need um, a uh, very good insulated uh, mat it doesn't necessarily have to be this type of mat so you know what I can't remember the name of this mat I'll put it up on the screen Anyway, this is um, a winter mat. It was silver, but it's worn away the silver, but it's got little air pockets 
little grooves apparently in some of the trap heat to make it um, warmer than a normal flat sort of standard mat. And for a sleeping bag, I've got um, a Rab Ascent 900, and it is a woman's sleeping bag because I'm a short ass. And the only difference between the woman's and men's sleeping bag, I think, is that the sleeping bag is shorter, and that's what I need. So this is a Rab 900. I'll open it up for you. This is the first time I've used this one. It's uh, only been used once, and I got it second hand, so it's good as new. So I got it quite a bit cheaper than the normal retail price because it's only been used once. I had to replace my other one. It's totally worn out, and I tried washing it. And as you know, I don't know if you've seen my other videos, I burned um, holes in it when I was washing it. So yeah, so I can't use that anymore really. So this is supposed to be very. This is meant to be good for a Norwegian winter. I, I don't know if that's Norwegian winter staying in a hut. I think it's probably a Norwegian winter staying in a sort of like, you know, hiker's hut. I don't think it's sleeping outside a Norwegian winter, but it'd be definitely warm enough for camping in a um, UK um, winter. So it's basically I've got that. Now I've got a thing I've never used before on my last uh, two down sleeping bags. Um, so I've got this uh, Rab Silk Mummy liner, brand new off eBay, about 20 quid cheaper than normal. And it's also a pipsqueak one for me. Uh, so it's the same size as this sleeping bag really. So I don't know how easy this is to put in. Some people say it's quite a pain in the ass to put these in. It's very light, it's just, just over 100 grams in weight. Um, Okay, so the silk liner goes inside the sleeping bag. It actually gives you a little bit extra warmth as well, apparently, which I thought it would do. Um, I don't know why you're seeing this. Um, yeah, it's supposed to be um, make it a little bit warmer, but the main reason is to prolong the life of the. Um, I've got to put it the wrong way around, I think. Am I? No, I haven't. It's to prolong the life of the um, down sleeping bag, as you. It's not recommended to wash down very often. You want to wash it as least as possible any when you really need to, because like what happened with my last sleeping bag, um, this prevents it getting loads of grease and dirt inside the sleeping bag. And you can wash the silk liner instead of the sleeping bag. You actually don't want to really want to wash the down sleeping bag if you can help it too often. And uh, yeah, so that should keep it nice and clean, hopefully. And I've also got this, which I've used loads of times before, a very light mountain equipment uh, bivy bag. Now this is will add some extra, even more warmth. But it will also protect the sleeping bag from getting wet, not from rain, but from uh, damp, because you get damp this tiny in any tent. Not because it's this tent, uh, any tent. I mean, this tent's built like a tank. It, it does not leak when it pisses down the rain, but. Um, yeah, all tents suffer from condensation and dampness, um, and this should help the sleeping bag not get damp. Um, so I'll open this up and show you. Okay, so this is the uh, this is the bivy bag. It's a sleeping bag, and now I'll put the um, bivy bag around the um, the uh, down sleeping bag, and I'll show you what that looks like. Okay, so folks, you might want to try and put the sleeping bag outside the tent if you've got a small tent like mine into the bivy bag because if you want to use a bivy bag that is because um, I recommend it though, an ultralight bivy bag like this to keep the sleeping bag dry. Um, it's easier putting it in in the bivy bag outside the tent than putting it back in the tent. Obviously you don't want to do that if it's pissing down the rain you'll have to do it in the tent. But um, if it's okay. This now that will be. I mean, I've got a seriously warm sleeping bag, I've got a silk liner, and I've also got um, a uh, mountain equipment uh, ultralight bivy over it to keep it dry and some extra warmth. Um, I've got uh, this is actually a free season tent, it's not a um, it's not a four season tent. But 
obviously in the winter I'll have a four season tent but for autumn this is fine this is very fine setup for keep me very warm I don't even need a hot water bowl in the winter I will use a hot water bottle as well okay folks well here's the food I'm taking with me um, I've got a whole bunch of uh, beyond the beaten tracks meals as you can see um, here we got um, meatballs and pasta and here we've got chicken tikka, lamb casserole, uh, two chocolate bars, um, and my favourite uh, noodles there, um, and spam, favourite, and um, peanut butter, which is good for your bones, all day breakfast, uh, chicken and mushroom pasta, and steak and vegetables, and I've got my uh, brown sugar there coffee and salt and um, you can um, if you want to buy these uh, meals you can use uh, the Amazon links Amazon link which is um, on the uh, this YouTube video below the video or you can go to fourseasonbackpacking.co.uk and use the Amazon links there The first time using my sleeping bag, this new sleeping bag with uh, all the the, the, the silk in there as well. I've had the fifty bag before, as I said, and I can tell you it is so warm and comfortable. And as I said, I've got that mat as well. Um, when it's winter, I'll be definitely. I'll use the hot water bottle as well, most likely. Um, but this is definitely warmer than my last sleeping bag. I lost, lost its loft. I've not been using this silk lining with it. Um, yeah, this is much warmer. It will definitely be okay for a winter in my heat than this. And really, this is one way to keep warm and obviously wear thermals. I'm not at the moment because it's not winter. The sleeping bag is enough to set up for the autumn. So it's going to get cold this night, so i would be interested to see what it's like in the night. But um, yeah, so winter thermals as well. Thermal top, thermal bottoms. Um, and hot water bottle, that should be fine. Oh yeah, and mate, like if it's very cold, a ski mask. You've got to keep your head covered. Anywhere like three Celsius and below. And ignorance is so good, really good to me. Camping out. Because otherwise you're going to wake up with a banging me. headache. Or even worse, and you're going to die in your sleep. To so, me. yeah. More tips to come. The scarless by you is in my. so close nobody's around just to me and a wall of sound just a wall of
Someone approached me I knew I could have her I didn't hear her words at all Just saw the meadow again But it was different from back then oh, Folks, my bag's got its own little tent I'll put it in its uh Warproof jacket and it zips up all all up so when it rains it should keep it fairly dry. Um, it's all zipped up so it should be okay-ish depending on how heavy the rain is. And um, this tent is fine as I've said before. Right, I'm gonna get my tent. It's getting cold to so test out the sleeping bag a bit good to test. Okay folks, so I'm reviewing the Beyond the Beaten Tracks ready meal meatballs and pasta. Beef meatballs in a herby tomato sauce with onion and garlic notes combined with pasta shells. I'm pretty sure I've had it before and it was nice. Uh, that's the front of it. Some information on the back of it if you want to read it. You can eat it cold or hot as with I think all of these uh, off Beyond the Beaten Tracks. They're ready to eat. You don't have to add water. Okay, all right, open it up and show you what it's like inside the packing. This is what it looks like inside the packing. It's got some information there. You can put this in, um, as I've said with the others, you can put these in a pot of boiling water to heat it up and not get your pan dirty. But as I'm not by a river at the moment, I'm gonna eat it cold. Um, or I could put it in the pan and heat it up, but then I'll have to clean the pan, so I'm just gonna eat it cold and it's quite windy outside at the moment. So I'll open that up and show you what it's like inside, what the food looks like. Okay, so that's what it looks like inside, and I'm just gonna eat it and I'll let you know how it tasted. I'm not sure the meatballs and pasta go well, too well together. It might be because I've ate it cold, maybe it's better warm. It wasn't too bad, but it's not my most favorite one of uh, Beyond the Beaten Tracks. The meatballs just don't seem to go well with the pasta, in my opinion. Well, other people might like that, but it was eatable. So, folks, it's a uh, it's a uh, very windy, rainy night, and um, even though I'm camped in some good shelter up the hill, well. 300 metres high, I think. Uh, so I'm glad we can camp up on the highest point, which is really exposed. And what's the point when it's like this? Hmm. I'm going back to sleep.